welcome to Zoo to You Vertebrates Edition. Today we are talking about amphibians. But before we do, let's chat just a second about what makes a vertebrate. So a vertebrate is an animal that has a spine or a backbone. So if you put your hand on the middle of your back and lean forward a little bit until you can feel some lumps and bumps running up and down the center, those are your vertebra or the bones that make up your backbone. Now just like you and I have that backbone, Tony here also has that backbone. Now, Tony is part of one of the five classes of vertebrates, and he specifically is an amphibian, with the other classes being mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Now, amphibians are unique for a couple of different reasons. Like our reptiles and our fish, they're cold-blooded. So he relies on his environment to tell his body what temperature it's gonna be, unlike you and I, where our body temperature would remain constant he's going to need different areas in his environment to be hotter or cooler so that he can warm himself up or cool himself down based on what his body is saying it needs at the time. He is also going to lay eggs like birds and reptiles and fish. But where birds' eggs are nice and hard and reptiles' eggs are leathery, amphibian eggs are going to resemble a fish's eggs a little more closely than the other two in that they're going to be a little bit jelly-like in texture. Now, where amphibians are truly unique from many of the other classes of vertebrates is in their growth cycle. So amphibians lay eggs, and then for frogs, and for many salamanders, they are gonna hatch in a larval state. And if it is a frog, it's gonna be something that we'll call a tadpole, which resembles almost a small fish underwater. There are no arms and legs, and you can clearly see here that Tony definitely has arms and legs. So what happens? Well, amphibians go through something called metamorphosis. So they change over the course of their lifetime between their infancy or their larval state and their adulthood. And for salamanders and frogs, that's going to mean growing the arms and legs that will eventually allow them to come out of the water. So they are gonna hatch in their eggs, they're gonna spend their larval stages completely underwater, breathing underwater, eating underwater, and as they grow, those limbs are gonna grow in, they're going to develop lungs, and they will eventually exit the water for part of their lifetime, but they're always gonna stay pretty close because one of the other features that amphibians have is moist, permeable skin. Now moist just means that it needs to stay a little bit wet in order for these guys to be nice and healthy. But permeable is where these guys really stand out. Having that permeable skin means that amphibians can absorb air and water through their skin. You and I have to use our noses to breathe, we have to use our mouths to drink, but Tony doesn't. He can take those things in right through his skin. Now that makes these guys play a really important role in their ecosystem as something called indicator species. Now common indicators you and I should know really well are things like a clock or a watch. That's going to indicate what time it is. It's going to tell me the time. Another thing you might be familiar with is a thermometer. Maybe you've had your temperature taken at the doctor or you've looked at the temperature to decide what to wear in the morning. Thermometers are indicators of temperature. They tell us what temperature it is. These guys indicate for scientists the health of the overall ecosystem. Now, one of the things that we can look for because of that permeable skin is looking at things like air and water pollution. Because of that water or that air is dirty or unclean, it starts to make these guys sick, which means they need to not stay in that environment. So one of the things that scientists might look at if they go to an ecosystem that should have amphibians in it and they're either struggling population wise or they're not there anymore is they can take a look at the air and the water quality. That's all we've got for you guys today on Zoo to You Vertebrates Edition, specifically taking a look at amphibians. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are looking for any more at-home learning resources, check out our learn page at zooatlanta.org and stay connected with us on social media using hashtag OnlyZooATL.